Hello Psychologies, my name is Ali roth Farah, and I am the Wellness Director at Psychologies Magazine and also a yoga and mindfulness expert and author of my new book called The Wellfulness Project and I wanted to jump on today as it's the middle of um, Mental Health Awareness Week to share what I know about mindfulness and how it can help with our mental health and I think that mindfulness is one of those subjects that's been so widely written about and spoken about now that it's almost starting the phrase for example be in the present moment is starting to lose all meaning <laughs> um, and my goal in writing my book the wellfulness project was to try to kind of get down past the layers of jargon and all of this being in the moment stuff and start to really um, understand what mindfulness is and how it can actually help us and it can it can help us in in numerous ways it can help us to be um, more healthy it can help us make better decisions um, to support the life that we want to live and that's what my book's about and also it can help us um, greatly to improve our mental health and be more content um, and one of the phrases we like to use in mindfulness is to start to um, to step out of the dinghy that feels um, if we're on an ocean um, that's obviously an ocean is going to sometimes be calm and sometimes it will be rush, rough and there'll be stormy seas at the moment we're going through a bit of a stormy sea um, and if we're in a small dinghy we're going to feel every single bump and um, every wave that we go over and it's going to be a bit of a rocky ride and an uncomfortable ride and what mindfulness can help us do is step out of that little dinghy and onto a nice big cruiser so that yes we'll still be riding the waves, the waves will still be there, the stormy seas might still be there but we don't feel every single bump and wave as we would in the dinghy. So let's talk a minute about being in the present moment. We're obviously using that phrase a lot in mindfulness and it's it of course makes a, a lot of sense in that we can learn to start to be in the here and now, stop worrying so much about what's going to happen in the future, stop worrying so much about what's happened in the past and be here where we actually are in the real moment and that number one helps us live our lives more fully but it also allows us to stop worrying so much about what's going on. But for me that phrase is limited because that's all it allows us to do. What mindfulness actually is, the practice of being in the present moment um, is usually practiced outside of ourselves so we're thinking about being in the present moment with sounds and stuff. That's great but really what does it do for us? Well it's just a practice, it helps us to practice being in the present moment in a way that doesn't feel really uncomfortable. Once we've mastered that, which I think many of us have by now, you know, we've, st we've read all about mindfulness, we, we've done all the mindfulness practices, what we then want to start doing once we know how to be in the present moment is start to kind of turn that focus inwards, that focus of being in the present moment and moving that internally. So start to be in the present moment within yourself. And what does that really mean? Well, it means beginning to be in the moment, in the here and now, noticing, because that's what we do, we notice the sounds, begin to notice what's happening inside. And we do this in, in many different ways. We can start to notice how we're feeling. So just asking ourselves how we feel or meditations. I've done a couple here on uh, the Psychologies TV channel and on the podcast as well, um, from body scans to, to breath meditations, beginning to ask, how do I feel today? And that can be uncomfortable sometimes if we're not feeling great. And um, so beginning to ask, ask that after we've mastered, you know, what's happening, what am I noticing outside? Um, turning it inwards can be a little bit more challenging than noticing what's going on outside in the with the birds and the trees, um, because we might not be feeling great. but doing that allows us to practice um, an essential skill of mindfulness which is non-judgment. So just as we might um, listen to the sounds outside, we're practicing to listen to them without judgment. So yes, I love the sound of the, of the birds and the trees, 
mm, I don't quite like that sound of the cars. But what we're trying to do is start to just be with all of those sounds without judgment, just allowing them to be there. And so when we start to turn that skill inwards, we're beginning to allow ourselves to be with the negative or uncomfortable emotions, as well as the positive, the happy emotions, the, um, the excitement, the joy, alongside the, the worry, the anxiety, the uncertainty. And we do this with using non-judgment. So just practicing, how do I feel today? And just looking at it and observing it without trying to um, put labels onto it. And one of the um, yogic philosophies is that they don't um, start to think about or debate where an emotion comes from. They put all of their focus onto how can I stop those emotions from fluctuating so much. And so I think in the Western world a lot, we, we might try to understand our emotions and there's definitely a place for that, of course, because sometimes we can you know, consciously change the things in our lives that are causing those emotions. But when we're in a situation where we can't change the things that are causing those emotions, and that's something that we're really going through at the moment, I think, um, a lot of things are happening that are outside of our control. And so, Trying to understand those emotions while on the surface level, you know, understanding, well, um, I'm feeling anxious because there's a pandemic going on. I don't know what's going to happen with my work, for example. We can understand it to a certain degree, but trying to change that, change that emotion or change the situation is impossible for us. So what we want to do instead of trying to um, put out energy into changing things is to start putting out energy into just noticing and being with our emotions with a sense of non-judgment and that can be really difficult because judgment often comes naturally us to us as humans so we always like to in mindfulness apply I always say apply a balm of um, kindness or compassion to how you're feeling because that helps us to um, start the journey towards towards non-judgment and those two things combine non-judgment with compassion help us begin to accept how we're feeling because when we're in a situation where we can't control what's happening the only thing apart from trying to control it which as we've realized is impossible the only other option we have is to accept and that can be very, very difficult for us to do. If anyone's said, oh, you know, just, why don't you just like, stop worrying about it? It's not that. That can be a very um, challenging thing to hear. And it's often not very helpful. I'm sure all of us have, have um, you know, gone through that and had someone say that to us before. So we're not asking ourselves just to, you know, stop worrying or stop um, feeling that way because that's trying to control it again, isn't it? I just want to stop feeling that way. Another thing we do is try and distract ourselves. So many of us might be, um, you know, heading for the biscuit tin a little bit more often um, or grabbing the wine. We might be binging box sets. Not, that, not to say that any of those things are not okay, but if we're doing things to distract ourselves from how we're feeling, it can often be quite toxic and we'll find ourselves in a situation where we still feel the same, but we've done some stuff that makes us feel even more guilty or adding layers of um, unpleasant feelings and emotions on top of that. So by beginning to be with our emotions just by looking at them and observing them allows us to look at them which, with um, and practice that skill of non-judgment. And non-judgment combined with compassion allows us begin to begin to accept our emotions and accept that they are there, not trying to push them away or control them, not trying to distract ourselves from them, just allowing them to be there. And often what we'll find is that when we allow our emotions to just be there, they're not actually as bad as we kind of expect them to be. Um, often when we're trying to push something away or ignore it, it screams louder at us and tries to get our attention. So just allowing it to be there, maybe even turning to it with that compassion, seeing your emotion or your, your worried self, for example. So for me, it might be a worried Ali. I can turn to her and apply that compassion directly to that emotion, put my arm around her and say, it's going to be okay. 
So that's a little brief intro into what mindfulness really is and how it can help us with our mental health. I hope you've enjoyed this and stay tuned for more videos.